Thank you very much. I would like to invite Carlos Rufin from Suffolk University to come up and invite the first panel members to take their seats. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. I want to thank, uh, first of all, the organizers uh, of the conference, Patricia Marquez and Jaime Alonso, for the opportunity uh, to be here. I think we have uh, a very, very exciting first panel of the conference, uh, doing a lot of work myself on this area of uh, uh, service provision at the base of the pyramid. I think this is a very exciting field. Uh, for example, we have uh, you know one of the uh, probably the fastest uh, growing uh, area of poverty in the world is urban poverty. And I think one of the uh, key issues of dealing with urban poverty around the world is uh, the or the most urgent tasks is to provide services, basic services, to the millions of people who live in the rapidly growing cities. Uh, of the developing world. So today we have a very exciting panel that will talk about these and other experiences in service delivery. Uh, in the first place, I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Tony Aquino uh, from uh, CEO of Ayala Land in the Philippines and uh, former CEO of Manila Water. I think uh, the water sector has been one of the most challenging sectors, if not the most challenging in terms of service provision uh, because of its very highly charged political nature, among other things. Uh, so I think the experience of Manila Water is an outstanding experience of how uh, a private sector company has been able to vastly improve the delivery of this very basic and very important service to millions of people in the Philippines. Our second panelist today is, uh, uh, is um, Gavin uh, Erin, right, from uh, Qualcomm. She's the manager of government affairs at Qualcomm, and she's going to be talking about uh, the, her experiences with Qualcomm in uh, the area of telecommunications and cell phones. Um, having done a little bit of work on this, I can say that uh, I think this is one of the most exciting and I think one of the most transformative uh, changes that we have seen over the last uh, few decades in terms of servicing the BOP. Uh, the, uh, the cell phone companies and the cell phone industry has been incredibly dynamic in uh, providing a, a service that has clear and well-documented impacts on poverty reduction and uh, that can also operate and reach uh, really truly to the, to the bottom of the pyramid. I remember that uh, you know, one of the few foreign companies that was operating very successfully in Haiti before the earthquake, and I think they're still doing so, uh, is the cell phone provider, which is an, an Irish uh, cell phone company that went there. And the third panelist that we have is uh, Ivar Peterson, uh, whom I have uh, had the pleasure of knowing for several years, and who uh, is the regional manager for Latin America and uh, Africa for AES Corporation. And he uh, also went through, a, a, was a, a uh, general manager of uh, one of Latin America's largest electric utilities, Electro Paulo in, in, in uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil, uh, presided over the, uh, an amazing experience of transformation uh, of uh, providing service to one of the largest uh, informal communities uh, in Brazil, if not the world, the Paraisopolis favela in Sao Paulo. And before that, also had a fascinating experience with uh, the same type of initiative uh, when he was uh, uh, working, where he was the uh, CEO of uh, Electricidad de Caracas, uh, also a very large utility that was formerly owned by AES in, in, in the capital of Venezuela. So uh, without further ado, let me invite the panelists to come to the stage. Well, good morning. Thank you, Carlos, very much for the introduction. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to be a part of the summit today. Uh, I've worked for Qualcomm for the last six years, uh, most recently within our government affairs team, specifically the Wireless Reach Group, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. Um, a little bit more about myself is that within uh, government affairs and wireless reach, I focus on projects in Southeast Asia and Africa. Um, and through that work, certainly C.K. Prahalad's principles are quite relevant. Um, also personally, like many of you, I studied uh, in my undergraduate and graduate uh, programs, intercultural studies, communications, business, and so I see it all coming together uh, in the work that I'm doing, which is very rewarding. So today I'll be providing you with an overview of Qualcomm's innovative initiative called Wireless Reach and sharing examples of how my organization fosters business at the base of the pyramid. Thanks. 
Uh, first, a little bit more about Qualcomm. Uh, for over 25 years, Qualcomm um, and Qualcomm's ideas and inventions have driven the evolution of wireless communications, connecting people more closely to information, entertainment, and one another. Today, Qualcomm technologies are powering the convergence of mobile communication and consumer electronics, making wireless devices and services more personable, affordable, and accessible to people everywhere. A little bit of information, just quick facts. Qualcomm has grown to about 18,000 employees in over 140 countries. Um, and we, we currently, um, just in terms of size, it's about $11 billion a company annually. So um, we, you know, our foundation was based here in San Diego with Dr. Erwin Jacobs and just a few, um, a few of his colleagues and founders, and now has grown into this multinational organization. Um, Dr. Erwin Jacobs and his um, co-founders certainly believed and, and had the vision of using our technologies to help connect people and improve their lives. So now, around the world, there are over 5 billion mobile phone users. And to quote our current CEO, Dr. Paul Jacobs, the mobile phone has become the biggest platform in the history of mankind. Now, that's a bit of a, of a bold statement, but throughout <laughs> the presentation and the discussion today, I think you'll, you'll really um, see in the ways that mobile phones has this global reach and the impact we're able to have with that. And actually, I believe uh, Mrs. Sheree Blair was here just the other day. She also came to visit us at Qualcomm. And uh, one of the topics of her discussion, uh, she's got a foundation for women um, in which they do work with uh, mobile phones and helping women in emerging markets. And she said, gosh, I realize that this mobile phone is the only computer that many people um, in these emerging markets will have. Uh, there are currently 1 billion 3G subscriptions, so Qualcomm's foundation is really based on the intellectual property around 3G technology and, and a variety of other technologies. So now there's three, 1 billion 3G subscribers and 2.7 billion 3G subscribers by 2014. So again, a, a growing, <coughs> growing platform. Um, currently, though, as, as you know, um, a digital divide exists today. Um, and through that digital divide, we're starting to realize that with um, internet penetration, you see that at about 29%, um, but global mobile, global mobile penetration is 77% um, and rising. And what we're seeing is that impact of that internet and mobile penetration for developing countries and the fact that it actually has a direct effect to GDP and the possibility to increase that for emerging markets is quite impressive. Um, so, you know, why did we start this program? Um, about five or six years ago, um, our organization realized that we were, um, especially within government affairs, having discussions with ministries of communication and ICT and regulators and policymakers, and we wanted to be able to demonstrate how 3G technology was very much beneficial um, to individuals within countries as well as, um, as having a positive economic and social impact. And we believed that 3 3G technology um, could really help uh, increase this communication and this benefit. Um, so we talk about 3G being fast, um, affordable, and prevalent. So what you'll see a little bit as I give a case um, example, a case study, is that some of these low-cost smartphones, um, for example, in Indonesia, are now down to around $25. Um, and through microfinance loans, that becomes quite affordable. Um, so, so prevalence and affordability is important. Um, a little bit about uh, our wireless reach initiative. So as I mentioned, it was started five or six years ago. It's grown into 64 projects in 27 countries. So we've got a project in Tarlac, Philippines. Um, we've got projects in Brazil and Mexico, um, all around the world. Uh, so what I really came to talk to you about today um, was um, uh, one of our strongest projects. We call it our flagship, one of our flagship projects. Um, and, and this is focused on fostering entrepreneurship in uh, Indonesia. Um, so we've been working with Grameen Foundation for over four years and Bakri Telkom, which is the local 3G operator in Indonesia. 
And this, this concept was basically um, based on Muhammad Yunus's notion of bringing microfinance opportunities and ICT into the emerging markets and creating a business in a box solution and seeing um, the direct impact that that could have on um, especially women at the base of the pyramid. So here you just see a few images. Um, we call this program our Village Phone Operator Program. And I'm just going to tell you um, a few statistics on how this program is currently doing. Um, so uh, we now have over 8,500 village phone operators in this program, and they're servicing over 800,000 unique customers. So the concept is really quite simple. They have a business in a box, so it's a low-cost mobile phone. Um, we help provide them with the marketing material and the training to learn how to run this business. Um, Grameen Foundation, and now um, the local social enterprise named Ruma that we helped develop to ensure the project could be sustainable and scalable in country. Um, and, and so the village phone operators receive training. And th through this program, they're actually able to serve as the, the phone operator for their community. So this says um, women living at the base of the pyramid, less than two US $2.50 a day, um, and their community members will come to them and, and essentially give them rupiah for a few minutes of airtime for them to be able to call their family and friends about a variety of issues. Now, we realized, and I think this is part of what our discussion will get into, is some of those challenges we had in the first year or two and, and why we needed to create that local social, social enterprise to help this get off the ground. But now we are st starting to see a rapid growth and uptake of these village phone operators. And we have seen um, that 85% of the businesses are now owned by women. 100% of the village phone operators are profitable. Um, and uh, an estimated 47% of the entrepreneurs who stay in the program for more than four months have moved above the poverty line. So some really, truly great um, impact. So we've been now built on this, and this is, uh, I think, my last, last slide here before I pass it to my colleague here. Um, we decided to evolve this project even further because we realized that Creating a business model for the base of the pyramid was difficult for Ruma, the social enterprise, to be able to sustain itself. That if we could develop a suite of applications that could actually be targeted to the poor rather than the poorest, that could help supplement Ruma's business so they could continue with their social enterprise goal of helping the base of the pyramid. So now what we've done is we've worked with Bakri Telcom to launch um, a suite of applications commercially on their low-cost smartphones. We call it a lively suite or an entrepreneurial suite. Um, in Indi Bahasa Indonesia, it's, it's Usuhaku. Um, and the suite is allowing a few different types of services. Um, one, there is the top-up application. So when you go to, to Indonesia, you usually have to get the scratch-off cards and you have to pay for that card. Um, and now instead, the village phone operators and the other um, users of this application can top up electronically other people's um, airtime. And they therefore or get some money for that service. We've also developed a day job search, so community members can come to their village phone operator or other um, villagers that have this application and input information on their location and their job skill set and get a message back on where they can go to get a job for that day, um, rather than going and commuting for hours and standing in line for hours and possibly not getting anything. Um, and to hear more about the, the future services, um, we can certainly discuss that a little bit more. Um, but now I'd like to, to go ahead and pass it off to my colleague, Kerr. Thank you.